superbugs, zombie genes, and unexpected mutations caused by gene editing technology like CRISPR. These are horrifying mutations that scientists fear are spreading. Superbugs are bacteria that have developed resistance to the antibiotics we rely on to treat infections. This is becoming a bit of a concern because it means that infections which used to be easy to treat with simple antibiotics could become deadly again. And these superbugs can spread quickly, especially in places like hospitals where people are already weakened by other health issues. Bacteria learn to fight off the treatments we use to kill them, so the usual treatments don't work anymore. In some cases, even the strongest antibiotics available have no effect. If things were to continue like this, we might be looking at a world where simple cuts or infections could become life-threatening again, and things that used to be manageable, like pneumonia or urinary tract infections, could be lethal. We've already seen some superbugs in action. The most famous example is probably MRSA, which resists common antibiotics and can cause everything from minor skin infections to more serious ones. There are others out there like C. difficile and multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. And without new antibiotics or treatments, the future could look a lot like it did before antibiotics were discovered. A lot of people could die from infections that we just don't think twice about because they're so easy to treat. Apparently our DNA has a lot of what's called junk, which are stretches of genetic material that don't seem to have any specific purpose. But scientists are starting to worry that some of this so-called junk DNA might suddenly turn on in ways we don't understand. If these dormant genes were to activate, they could cause unexpected mutations in our cells, leading to diseases or even new forms of cancer. The problem is they don't know exactly what these dormant genes do. I don't know though, I mean, why be all doom and gloom about it? Maybe these dormant genes are more like the X gene in X-Men and we'll start having people with laser eyes and the power to control the weather. They should look into that. If these genes were to wake up though, they could potentially start producing harmful proteins or cause other genetic problems that result in serious health issues. Some scientists, again, think Think that certain forms of cancer might be linked to junk DNA. Gene editing technology, especially CRISPR, has been a pretty huge leap in science. They can now make some incredibly precise changes to DNA, which opens up all sorts of possibilities from curing genetic diseases to creating crops that are resistant to pests. But there's a looming threat behind it, the risk of unintended mutations. Even though CRISPR is incredibly accurate, it's not perfect. Sometimes it can cut or alter DNA in unexpected ways, creating problems that no one saw coming. Changes like this could potentially cause new diseases or make existing ones even worse. One big concern is that these unintended mutations could be passed on to future generations, making the problem even worse. Imagine editing a gene to prevent a disease, but instead you accidentally create a new health issue that's even worse than the one you were trying to avoid in the first place. And of course, forget mistakes even, sometimes people just cause harm intentionally. Another fear is that CRISPR could be used to create bioweapons and God knows what else. There's definitely a lot of good that can come from gene editing, but still a lot we don't know about what can happen long term. Xenobiology is the study of life that isn't quite like the life we know on Earth. It's about creating new artificial life forms, organisms that don't naturally occur in nature, but are designed by humans. So with advances in synthetic biology, scientists have already created bacteria and even yeast that have been altered. As you can probably guess though, the big concern here is that these artificial life forms could mutate in unpredictable ways, creating new diseases or causing harm to the environment. One of the biggest worries is that these new life forms could escape the lab and spread into the wild, where they might compete with or disrupt natural ecosystems. Let's say we had some genetically altered lab bacteria that could eat plastic, but instead of stopping once it's eaten enough, it just mutates to start breaking down other materials that are essential to life. Or imagine we had a synthetic organism that can survive in extreme environments like the deep ocean and suddenly becomes a global threat. There's a very real potential for unpredictable consequences. And as we get better at creating life in a lab, the risks of these organisms mutating into Frankenstein-like creations also becomes more of a possibility. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy 
or to put it in fancier terms, mad cow disease, is a deadly disease known as a prion disease, a disorder of the brain that affects cattle and can, in rare cases, be transmitted to humans through infected beef. This disease is caused by what's called a misfolded protein, a protein that has folded incorrectly, resulting in a toxic shape. Once it takes hold, it leads to brain degeneration. So what if a prion disease like mad cow were to mutate, making it more easily spread and deadly? The thing about prion diseases is that they're incredibly difficult to treat. There are no antibiotics or antiviral treatments that work against them, and they often take years to develop symptoms. And as cattle farming practices change or new methods of processing meat are introduced, these types of diseases could evolve and spread in ways that we're just not prepared for. And because prion diseases are so contagious and devastating once they take hold, scientists are keeping a close watch on the possibility that new mutated forms could grow and pose a serious risk to global health. Fungal infections are another area where mutations could cause huge problems. Candida auris, for example, is a pretty nasty fungus that people tend to get in hospitals when they already have weakened immune systems. What's really creepy about this one is that it's mutated to become resistant to most antifungal treatments, so it's almost impossible to get rid of. It can cause severe infections, especially in people, again, with weakened immune systems, and because it's so resistant to treatment, it's a nightmare for doctors trying to treat it. But the problems don't stop there. Fungal guy like Candida auris get better at surviving in hospital environments where they're more likely to come in contact with vulnerable patients. And because they're so hard to treat, they can spread quickly between patients, making outbreaks much harder to contain. The fear is that if these fungi keep mutating, they'll become even harder to fight, potentially leading to even deadlier infections that can spread across entire hospitals or communities. As our oceans continue getting warmer, scientists are seeing an increase in the amount and size of toxic algae blooms. Now, toxic algae blooms, or harmful algae blooms, happen when certain types of algae grow out of control, producing toxins that can cause all sorts of problems. These toxins can contaminate drinking water, poison marine life, and even cause neurological diseases in humans. Some of these algae produce a toxin called domoic acid, which can poison the shellfish, uh, which in turn causes brain damage in humans who go on to eat the contaminated seafood. And the issue is only expected to get worse as the planet keeps getting warmer. The ocean becomes the perfect condition for algae to thrive. And as these algae blooms become more common, common and more toxic, they're posing a bigger and bigger threat to ecosystems underwater and our human health. In the same vein, pollution and radiation is causing issues with fish. We're starting to show signs of some pretty bizarre mutations. Some fish have been found with extra fins, extra eyes, or other strange mutations that you just rarely see in nature, only now it's becoming more common. Mutations like this can be caused by chemicals and radiation leaking into the environment from industrial buildings like power plants and factories. What's worrying scientists is that these mutations could potentially spread to other species and mess up entire ecosystems. If these mutated fish were to pass on their altered genes to their offspring, it could result in entire populations of animals with extra eyes or tentacles and tumors. It would just be a mess, and as nasty as that would be, it could have ripple effects in the food chain, affecting everything from the fish that humans eat to the animals that depend on these fish for food. We're already seeing signs of these mutations in fish populations near areas with heavy amounts of pollution, and there's real concern that as these changes spread, we might see bigger shifts in marine life that could be difficult, if not impossible, to undo. Environmental radiation is another huge concern when it comes to mutations. This can come from nuclear accidents like Chernobyl or Fukushima, radioactive waste, or even just natural sources of radiation in the environment. When plants, animals, or even humans are exposed to this radiation, it can cause pretty gnarly genetic mutations, and these mutations can get passed down through generations. There are cases of what's called the Chernobyl heart, for example, a heart condition in infants whose mothers were exposed to radiation in Chernobyl, and these mutations can spread throughout ecosystems, affecting populations of animals and plants, over time, the genetic changes could accumulate, leading to new diseases and deformities. Again, the Chernobyl disaster created this huge area
area of radioactive contamination and scientists have found a whole bunch of mutations in animals and plants living there. Some of these mutations are mostly harmless, but others could lead to long-term health problems or even extinction for certain species. Radiation mutations aren't always spotted immediately either. It can take a while for them to manifest, but they can be incredibly dangerous in the long term. And another concerning mutation that's getting more attention is the rise of chemical-induced mutations in plants, especially crops. Pesticides and herbicides, which have been used to protect plants from pests and weeds, are causing some pretty weird and unexpected genetic changes in the plants themselves. Over time, these chemicals can create mutations that make the plants more resistant to the chemicals, leading to what are called super weeds that are harder to control. And once again, some of these mutations might be passed on to future generations of plants, creating entire populations that are resistant to herbicides and pesticides. What if we were to run out of ways to protect crops? We'd have no vegetables, which of course means no popcorn at movie theaters, meaning I'd probably never bother going to the movies again, and that is a terrifying note to end on. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.